Hey, what's up everybody, I'm Tommy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build a twin screw vise. Whether this is your first time here, or even if you've been here before, welcome to One Minute Workbench. So this vise project is actually a rebuild. I've been wanting to rebuild it for a little while because there's just a couple of things about the original that I wasn't 100% happy with. Plus, it gave me an opportunity to video the process so I could share it with you guys. To make the jaws for the vise, I cut a six foot two by six in half. Now this is still oversized, but I'm gonna trim it down to its final length later on. Then I used a joiner and a planer to square up the faces. Now, if you don't have a joiner and a planer, just make sure you pick out the straightest, flattest two by six you can when you're buying your material. Then I used my table saw to cut the jaws down to their final width of 4.5 inches. And then after that, I cut the jaws down to their final length of 24 inches. Then I drew marks three inches from each end of one of the boards. This would give me 18 inch mounting hole spacing for the fixed jaw. I drilled three quarter inch holes, but not all the way through. The depth of the hole is equal to the thickness of a three quarter inch hex nut. I then partially threaded a three quarter inch hex nut onto a three quarter inch bolt and used that to center the hex nut over the hole so I could draw these marks. I then carefully chiseled out the shape of a hex nut based on the marks that I had just drawn. Now these don't have to be perfect, but you do wanna make sure that the hex nut is not gonna be able to spin around inside the hole. When I was done chiseling out the hole, I tested the hex nut to make sure it fit. At that point, it was time to drill the three quarter inch hole the rest of the way through. That was pretty much it for the fixed jaw, so I set that aside and started working on the loose jaw. For the loose jaw, I wanted the holes to be 18 inches on center, just like the fixed jaw, but instead of an actual hole, I wanted a slot that was three quarters of an inch wide by one and a half inches long. To make the slots, I drilled two three quarter inch holes that were right next to each other, giving the slot an overall length of one and a half inches. I lost the footage for what happened just after I drilled those two holes, but what I did was I used a jigsaw to connect the two holes and make these slots in the loose jaw. I also lost the footage of sanding and polyurethaning the jaws, but that's pretty boring, so you didn't miss much. The first time around when I built this vise, I made the hand wheels by using a large hole saw to cut out this shape, and then by using a small hole saw to cut out this shape. Then I removed the waste material and drilled my cavity for the hex nut. This time around though, I actually used a lathe to make the hand wheels. I had been looking for a good excuse to build a lathe for some time, and this project gave me that perfect opportunity. I glued up some boards to make sure I would have the thickness that I would need to add the wheel blanks to my lathe. Then I drew some rough marks based on my old wheels. Basically, what I'm going for here is a four inch diameter wheel. You don't want anything more than 4.5 inches because then the wheels would stick up past the top of your workbench and you certainly don't want that. I marked the centers on the wheel blanks and then drilled some holes in the ends so that I could mount it in the lathe. This lathe has a threaded rod in both the headstock and the tailstock. So the way you mount a blank is by simply threading the headstock into the blank and then threading the tailstock into the blank. This is actually the first lathe that I've ever used. And this is only the second time that I've ever used it. So go easy on my technique. I have to admit, using the lathe was really a lot of fun and it certainly made shaping and sanding the wheels a lot easier. After adding the finishing touches to the wheels, it was time to add a shape to hold the hex nut. Now this is basically just a repeat of what I did 
with the fixed jaw. So I'm drilling a hole that's three quarter inches in diameter and it's the same depth as the thickness of a three quarter inch hex nut. And then I draw marks and chisel out the hole. And just like with the shape and the fixed jaw, after I was sure the nut fit, I drilled the three quarter inch hole the rest of the way through the hand wheel. On the first twin screw vise I built, I used yellow glue to hold the hex nuts inside the hand wheels. This time around, I thought I might use epoxy though, just to give it a little bit of added durability. And just to give the hand wheels a little bit of contrast, I used some dark stain to set them apart from the jaws. I line the faces of the jaws with some synthetic leather material. This stuff is really durable and it was just dirt cheap. I had originally intended on using spray adhesive to attach the synthetic leather, but then I thought I might as well use yellow glue because I figure most people don't have spray adhesive at home. My biggest concern with using yellow glue was that it might be lumpy and the faces of the jaws might not be completely smooth. Then I got the idea to face the jaws towards each other and clamp them down. This makes it to where the yellow glue spreads out and will be an even thickness all the way across. And this actually worked out like a charm. When I unclamped them, the faces were completely smooth and there were no lumpy spots whatsoever. After that, I trimmed off the excess material and cut out the hex shaped holes in the fixed jaw and cut out the slot shaped holes in the loose jaw. So at this point, I had everything I needed to start assembling the vise. The mounting holes for my previous vise were still on my workbench, so I didn't have to drill those. Here I'm using 3 quarter inch hex bolts that are 8 inches long. After threading the hex bolts through the hex nuts that are embedded in the fixed jaw, I tighten them up. Now you don't have to go crazy here, you just want to make them fairly snug. When I added the first hand wheel to the vise, it wasn't turning freely. Then I realized that when I epoxied the hex nut in place, it wasn't sitting flush. So I took a hammer and an awl, and I put it on the side of the nut that was protruding, and I beat it until it was down and it was flush with the surface. After that, it turned freely. At that point, I felt like it was time to test the vise. So I clamped up a board, and check to see if it would hold my body weight. And it did just fine. I'm really happy with how the vise turned out. I think it looks just great. I know I'm gonna get a lot of good use out of it and it's one of the cheaper things you can build in your shop. It literally only cost me about $10 worth of materials. Hey, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe and check out all my other cool videos. Until the next time I see you, I hope you have fun building something.